Fire Emblem is my favorite franchise when it comes to Nintendo. I absolutely love this series. The art style, character design, soundtracks, gameplay, stories, characters. Eh, I think I'm getting ahead of myself, but can you blame me? This series has come a long way, and I can confidently say that i become a series veteran and a big kid fan of it as a whole. However, it's clear to see that this series is not what it used to be at all. Things have been changing a lot with Fire Emblem, and as such, it's split the fan base. Like, a lot. I mean, jeez, I didn't think a fan base could get more hectic than Sonic the Hedgehog. Why are we trying to set records on the shit that doesn't matter? Whatever. Starting as something incredibly niche and low-key, a series getting so much popularity and making so many different choices, of course, would divide fans. So, where do I stand? How did I get into this series? How do I feel where the series is now? And do I want anything to change? To answer this question, I'll have to tell you all my overall experience with this franchise, maybe some opinions on the games, and then tell you all how I feel about the series as it stands today. So, go on, get comfortable, grab a snack, and get your favorite body pillow of the manliest man Hector, because it's about to be a long video, baby. So, for those of you who are unaware, what the hell is a Fire Emblem? Well, Fire Emblem is a part of a genre known as a strategy RPG, games that focus on you controlling characters through a grid-like system and relying on the numbers to see how much damage you'll do, how much of a chance you have for even hitting the opponent, and using your brain to strategize different tactics in order to have your army succeed in battle. And the crazy thing about this franchise is that if a character you're controlling manages to get killed, then congratulations, they're gone for the rest of the game. Yeah, seriously, so it's a series in which every decision counts. But that's what makes it stand out and why it's so intriguing. There are normally a lot of characters per game, but every character has some sort of personality trait, arc, or something to stand out. Because of that, I want all my babies to live. It's not a series for everyone, clearly. It's pretty hard and not too welcoming in the grand scheme of things, but I love it so much. That tension of knowing that I hold the lives of my characters at my hand, being rewarded at the end of a tough battle with a continuation of an intriguing story, and sometimes more with recent games, the overall presentation being phenomenal, it's just such a great great series to me. To get a better understanding of how I feel about the series and where it is now, I believe that it's best to go over my experience with the series and what I think of the games I've played so far. i played almost all of the American releases. In fact, the only ones I don't own are Fire Emblem, Radiant Dawn, and Mystery of the Emblem, so my collection is nearly complete, and I like to think that I own and have played enough to have a solid opinion. Plus, you know, I just like talk, so... I, as many others, played a hell of a lot of Smash Bros. Even if I didn't know who someone was, I'd play as them if they seemed cool. And in Melee, Marth and Roy were the epitome of cool. They're what I like to call... Gucci. I mean, look at these designs! The dynamically colored hair, the capes, their swords, and they're the only two characters who speak Japanese? Who are these guys? And how can I play their games? is what I would have said if I wasn't slaving hours after hours just playing Melee. But wouldn't you know it, Marth came back for Brawl, and even if Roy couldn't make it this time, <sighs> Ike was here this time around, and he was just as cool, if not cooler. So I had to know. Fire Emblem, huh? Hmm. Let me see about maybe by- Oh. Alright. Back to Smash Bros. Fast forward a couple of years and Fire Emblem is seeing a new release for the 3DS. Everyone's saying they love it and I'm all about buying it before we see more of this shit. I play it, I love it. So, yes, I was an awakening baby. Despite not loving it as much as I used to, it's still a great game in my eyes. And would you look at that, it saved the entire series. Now older games are being re-released, newer games are being added, we've even got some remakes, spin-offs, and a mobile app? Hell to the yes! I was solidified as a fan and have been keeping up with all the new releases since Shadows of Valencia. Read personal history lesson now over, you should all have a good idea of where I'm coming from. And if it wasn't clear enough, let me spell it out for you because I really don't want a misunderstanding here. I started with Awakening, but I much prefer the originals after playing most of them. I don't think any of the 3DS games hold a candle to the Blazing Blade, Sacred Stones, and Path of Radiance, which are my three favorites. That all being said, how do I feel about where Fire Emblem has become? Because it certainly is different now. A lot has changed, focus has been shifted, and people like the series for different reasons now. It's an interesting situation for sure, but personally, I don't think it really comes down to a yes or no when I'm asked if I like where the series is at this point. More of a yes and no and I think I should go more in depth to that answer. What I mean when I say this is that I like what the series has become in terms of its success. Fire Emblem is one of Nintendo's big franchises now, and back when the series was still pretty niche, that was a pipe dream. The fact that we have so much now is amazing to me, and I couldn't be happier with its status because of how much I love it. However, I think this is a situation in which the mindset of the ends don't justify the means is applicable here. Changes such as adding a mode in which your characters won't permanently die called casual mode had to be added, giving an option to make your own character in order to appeal to a different demographic, allowing for 
said character and everyone else you want to marry with one another, have kids, and those kids get married too, and so much more, a lot of focus has been taken away from what makes Fire Emblem just that. Fire Emblem. I know and love it as a series that just kicks your ass and demands you get good. Learn to strategize, earn the right to have your character survive, get good. So it's a little discouraging when you find out how much simpler and easier the battle system has become. That or how ridiculously over the top and insanely difficult they become. There's a lack of what made my favorite three my favorites. Challenge, yet balance. Whatever you could do, the enemy could do, and vice versa. You had to know all your abilities and moves, as well as who could go where, and it was fun to be tactical and finally come out on top. Now it seems like all the chips fall in your lap, and it's really easy to get ridiculous stats in the games without even abusing grind methods and whatnot. And then when the game tries to balance things out by giving the enemies the same opportunities to get skills their units shouldn't have, ridiculous buffs, and adding reinforcements on top of that, it makes it seem like the only way to win is to abuse the system, and that's something I shouldn't feel like I have to do. Combat isn't as satisfying as it once was. I don't get that sense of accomplishment I did from the GBA and Tellius games, maybe even Awakening in some small cases. Instead, I just feel a sigh of relief and find myself saying, thank god it's finally over. And then there are a lot of story and character problems I have. It seems like they've forgotten what it's like to have a consistently evil villain instead of some last minute crap that nobody cares about. Stories like Fates and Awakening got ruined because of this, and yes, you could argue that Shadows of Valencia got this right, but that's a remake of, oh look at that, an early Fire Emblem game. I hate to sound like a broken record again, but those stories are always great in terms of their villains because they develop over the course of the story and you get to see them commit villainous actions. Path of Radiance and Shadows of Valencia once again have my favorite set of villains, those being the Black Knight and Berkut. Not just in terms of villains, but plot itself has just been a lot better in the older games too. I'm not saying these are bad in the newer games, well, except for Fates, but the decline in quality is still noticeable. What happened to our grand plots that kept things interesting but also had focus? Awakening felt disjointed, like it was trying too many things to the point where the story didn't even know what it wanted to do with itself. Blazing Blade got it right to a T by having a lot of focus on the conflict between the main team and the Black Fangs, but whenever it spiced things up, it never detracted from that too much. They were on the right track with Fates by advertising it as a game that would focus on the conflict between two families, in fact that could have been one of the better stories. But then they had to throw that all away by introducing the main villain as a last minute shit fest and suddenly plot convenience makes everything great again and work themselves out. I feel the older games just have more powerful moments of pure tragedy and emotion. Awakening got it right during the whole don't speak her name moment of the plot, but that was about it. I want more of that. I want things to feel like they have more weight again. Not that lazy writing can make everything great again, because that's kind of what's been happening lately. And then there's the fan service. My god, what happened here? Not to mention the whole dating sim aspect has been blown up to ridiculous amounts in fate, with the dumbass kiss scenes and petting simulation in a tactical RPG. Plus, if there's no time travel in games other than Awakening, there should be no reason for child units to be a thing. They literally make no sense. <sighs> wow. Sorry guys, didn't expect to go on a rant for that long, but as you can see, I have a lot of problems with what Fire Emblem's been doing lately. I don't want you all to be under the impression that I don't like the newer games, because that isn't really the case. I still like Awakening a lot, Fates, I... <sighs> Uh, um. And Shadows of Valencia was a great time despite some problems I was having with the gameplay. But, uh, where do we go from here? How do we fix this, specifically in the upcoming Nintendo Switch game? I'm sure as hell happy for the success this series has been getting, but I feel that if we made some twists here and there, things would be perfect. So, no, this video isn't over. I thought, you know what, why not give you all a treat? A double feature, if you will. I have some problems with the franchise as a whole, clearly, but what can we do from here on out, and what would I like to see the direction this series take in the next installment? Here's what I would personally like to see. Hey, I told you this would be a long video after all. As I said, we're getting a Fire Emblem game on the Switch sometime soon, and that means big things for the franchise. The last console release we got at this time was Radiant Dawn, which I personally haven't played yet because I haven't found it locally for a decent price like I did with Path of Radiance, and fuck that shit. This is a great way to reach a greater crowd, but let's do it right. I'm not completely satisfied with how Fire Emblem is right now, so let's talk about what we could do to fix that in the upcoming Switch game as a little bonus for you beautiful bastards. And, you know, I just like talking about Fire Emblem, so... Let's make the story akin to the older games again. If there's one thing that's become more apparent with the Shadows of Valencia re-release and Fates being side by side, it's that I prefer the older game stories more. Give us something akin to that. A villain built up from the very start. A story that keeps things interesting 
interesting, but never loses sight of the main goal established from the beginning. Moreover, I don't want this game to be one focused around choice. I appreciated the attempt in Fates, but it just didn't work. What's the point if there's one true path to the entire story anyways? I want one big story with a set beginning, middle, and end. It definitely strengthened the narrative as a whole. Characters should have development in the story as well as in the support conversations too, and if that means that the cast has to be smaller, then that's fine. I hate to use the same example yet again, but Shadows of Valencia got that right too, and because of that, it's one of my favorite casts in the series. That doesn't mean it has to be a small cast though, because Path of Radiance does this well too. That just has a much larger story to compensate, which leads me to my next point, make the story long and detailed. I want something that'll last a while, so a grand story is exactly what this Switch game needs. I don't want padding, of course, but I want no stone to be left unturned, and have side quests and optional mini stories too. With presentation, things have been consistent. As weird as I feel about Fates, it's a contender for my favorite soundtrack in the series. Don't ask me what that is yet though, I can't decide to save my life. Just take your time to make sure the models are as great as they can be on the Switch, and we'll be Gucci. For the love of god though, make the animations as fast and seamless as they are in Shadows of Valencia, because fuck, they were so slow in Path of Radiance. They've been getting combat animations right lately though, so I'm not too worried, just Wow, they're so fucking slow in that game. And I really love the CG cutscenes in Awakening and Fates. Those were beautiful. I'm not too big of a fan of the animation style used in Shadows of Valencia. I thought that was a weird mix of anime and CG, and it just looked bad to me. Animations were so awkward, and they can be a bit more expressive, but it looks worse overall. Let's stick with the 3DS original CG style. And I want the whole game to have a smooth frame rate of 60 frames per second. No, duh. The 3DS games have this weird thing where the map and menus all have that sexy frame rate, but then in combat it drops. With a more powerful hardware, this shouldn't be a problem anymore. And of course, with gameplay, all my complaints should be addressed. Combat should be akin to the older games, where you and the enemy are on equal footing. Specifically, I don't want enemies that can summon dozens of enemies at one time, because that's beyond dumb. Isn't that right, Shadows of Valencia? I also don't want class changing to be a thing anymore. That's right, I don't like this feature. There are ways to get abilities that certain units shouldn't have access to, and I don't think that's a smart design choice. Units should be limited to the class they started out as, and grow as that class only. To add variety, make every character unique, and so that enemies will only have skills their class is meant to have. Moving on, if pair-ups have to return, I love how they were handled in Fates because they were balanced and couldn't be abused, so I wouldn't mind that feature from that game making a return. I also want to keep the weapon triangle. I vastly prefer the triangle in my Fire Emblem games as they added that extra layer of strategy to the combat system. Maps should have a focus on defeating all the enemies, but lots of times where things change up, like defending for a set amount of terms, protecting certain units, so on and so forth. Conquest actually did this very well, but just don't make things too gimmicky because that would just detract from the main gameplay. I heard Revelation struggled with that, but I wouldn't know being that I haven't played that one because, well, fucking fates. I would also like stuff to do outside of battle. I actually really like the dungeon and town exploration in Shadows of Valencia and wouldn't mind seeing that make a return. Just drop the provision system because having to manage food and keeping my party healthy was pretty dumb. And I also love the idea of having a base to just mess around in. The one in Fates was great, and could make for a great place to have support conversations, as well as info conversations that Path of Radiance had, where you'd have small conversations about what's been happening recently in the story, which I'd love to see make a return. Having fun side scenes would be really cool and make for a lot of character building. Something akin to the Danganronpa games, where you'd have to kill an enemy for some type of item to trigger the scene, would be cool and make for a lot of replay value. I just don't want the option to pair up units with one another in terms of marriage, and if that has to be put in the game, just don't make some BS way to have child units. I like it when the story pairs up the units the way the writers intend, as that makes for much more satisfying conclusions to their arcs. Goes back to the whole streamlined story thing, it's easier to develop characters and get more depth when you're sticking to one canon, yeah? So all the more reason to stick with that idea. I am always right after all. <sighs> I think that about covers it. Lots of tweaks and changes I won, but I really think we're just so close. If I could sum it all up in one phrase, I'd say that fan service is detracting from the quality of Fire Emblem as a whole. Pandering to different crowds, trying a lot of things at once, so on and so forth. I miss the focus. I miss how things used to be and want them to remember how stories used to be told, what fair combat is, and what it means for the series, and that they can have extras without making it seem like a completely different game. We're getting there if Shadows of Valencia has anything to say about it, and in some small ways, 
fucking fates, and the new ideas can work. I think we've got progress to be made, but as you can tell, I don't hate any of the new games, and I still love Fire Emblem as a whole. I just know we can make better decisions and make the franchise into something so much better than what it is at the moment. I love this franchise to death, as I've said many, many, many times over the course of this video, and I look forward to seeing it grow in ways that can satisfy its fans. I don't know what to expect, this is just another fellow fan who loves the older games just that much more than the newer ones putting his opinion out there, but whatever this series does, I'll be a fan supporting every single release, even if I feel weird about it, like, fucking fates. But until the day I stop being a fan, long live Fire Emblem.